Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to today's session. Today we will go for FM two thousand twenty four paper six. First question about chromatography. They say ink contain different color substance called dye, and then they use chromatography to investigate the colored dye content in six different ink. The student drew a baseline on a sheet of chromatography paper, which is this. This we must use pencil. And then the ink must put on baseline. And then the student then place a spot of each ink on the chromatography paper and set up the apparatus as shown. Identify two arrows. So the first arrow is the ink is not on baseline. Because when we calculate the RF, we must based on the baseline. So if the ink is not on it, then we can count it accurately. The second problem is, so one level is below bottom of paper. Okay, so this is uh, two arrows in this question. Habi, state the name of equipment used to draw the baseline. So it's pencil. If the question asks you why use pencil, it's because it do not dissolve in solvent. Part C, the student corrects the arrows and then carries out a chromatography. The chromatogram shows this result. Identify an ink that would contain only one colored dye. So if after chromatography, it only shows one spot, so it's either yellow ink or blue ink. An ink, so you just name either yellow or blue. Deduce which ink could you make with blue to make black. So blue is this black need these two more, so we must pair it with orange ink. Next, deduce the color of one dye that contains in all three of orange, green, and black. Orange, green, and black. One dye that contains in all of these three is this color. So this color is actually comes from yellow. Done. Question 2 asks you to analyze as student investigate the temperature change when aqueous copper sulfate reacts separately with zinc and iron. So we know this is using displacement reaction. So we use zinc, then we'll displace copper. The student does two experiments. They use 50 cm cube of measuring cylinder to pour 30 cm cube of copper sulfate into 100 cm cube beaker. Use thermometer to measure and measure the temperature initially. Add zinc powder. Start the time with stopwatch. Using thermometer to stir the beaker. Measure the temperature every 30 seconds for 210 seconds. Empty and rinse the beaker and then repeat with iron. Then we see how the questions go. Okay, this question followed by they give you the information and then ask you to write down the data. So we must use ruler to check. So identify clearly, you get this data. This is the difference. So from 24 goes to 33.5, we use calculator, we found is 9.5. And then continue, this is 38 degree. So the difference is 14, then continue. Then this is also the same. This initially is 22. Then we continue to count based on the data given. Okay, so make sure all the data is in the same decimal place. Here, please don't write 2 because all in one decimal place. So you must write 2.0. Then, of course, the next thing is they ask you to sketch a graph. This data sketch here. 50 for 10 box, each box is 5, so here is 10, 20, 30. We need to fix the scale for the y-axis first, so the maximum is 20. So I decide to put 5.0, 10.0, 15.0, and 20.0. So when it's 30, it is 9.5. Here is 10 box for 5 also, so each box is 0 0.5. And then go to 14. 14 is 2 box. 90 is 
120 is 19. Two box below. 120, so it's four box. So you can see it's a graph that's going down. And then for the second experiment, it's zero. So this is experiment one and experiment two. Extrapolate the curve for experiment one to deduce the temperature change when it's after 240 degrees. Then we just continue. Based on here, we draw the line. So it's around 16.5. And make sure you show clearly the lines to show that you are finding the 240 second. Next, state which experiment, experiment one or two, is more exothermic. It's obviously experiment one because the temperature change is greater. Next, predict the temperature of solution in temperature one after three hours. They always like to ask this question to check whether you know the temperature will continue to drop at last. It's same as the room temperature, which you can write is 24 degree. Explain why using a copper container instead of a beaker would not be an improvement for this investigation. When we're measuring the temperature change, we don't want the heat loss to surrounding. Copper is actually a conductor and will cause the heat loss to surrounding. Next, describe two changes to the apparatus that will improve the results. First, we want to reduce heat loss so we can insulate the beaker to reduce heat loss. And then the second changes, we can use burette to measure the volume. It's more accurate than measuring cylinder. Okay, question three is salt analysis and test. So the student has two substance solution A and solid B. Test for solution A. It says it's a chromium chloride. The student divides this into three equal portion. Complete the observation. To the first portion, a student add NaOH dropwise until it excess. Chromium is here. So if we put sodium hydroxide, it will have green precipitate and soluble in excess. We just copy it here, then you get this too much. All information given at the back. Part B, to the second portion of solution A, is still chromium chloride. The student add dilute nitric acid with barium nitrate. So this is the test for anion. We check back anion for chlorine. They use nitric acid and silver nitrate. Silver nitrate and nitric acid will give you white precipitate. Then how if you use dilute nitric acid with barium nitrate, that one is to test sulfate. So here no changes, just like that. Next part, test on solid B. This shows observation on solid B. Test one, carry out flame test on solid B. Show you red color flame is only lithium, so we can confirm the presence of lithium. Test two, dissolve the remaining B into solution, and then the test. The first one that used a few drop of aqueous potassium magnate seven. The one that can cause potassium magnate seven to have reaction is sulfur dioxide, and they will turn purple to colorless. If they say pale purple solution, means that no effect, no changes. It's not sulfur dioxide. So test three, they add. NaOH and then solution remain colorless. On the cation test, they have many NaOH and then they tell you many precipitate will form. Solution form means that it's not the one that leads there. Test four, warm the product test three and test the gas. So they use the damp red litmus paper used to test ammonia. If it changed to blue, it's ammonia. If remain red means it's not ammonia. Test five. They add dilute nitric acid with barium nitrate and then white precipitate form here show you sulfate ion. So from the flame test, we know lithium. From test 5, we know it's sulfate. So we can confirm it's lithium sulfate for this solution. Then we can see what the question asks. Describe how to carry out the flame test in test 1. First, you need to put the solid on a wire and put it into flame. Use a blue Bunsen flame. 
So make sure you have these two information for any flame test. Identify iron that is tested for test four. So test four is actually to test the presence of ammonia. So ammonia is actually to test ammonium iron. Or you can write this. Identify the two ions which are in solid B. So we already know flame test telling me it is lithium. And then the test five telling us sulfite ion. So these two ion. If they say name, you must write the name. If they do not say name, then you can write the symbol or the name. Question four. Metal spoon can be electroplate using silver. So this is electroplating. So we have a metal spoon. We must plate it with silver. So when you choose which one is cathode, which one is anode, anode is the part that will become iron. So we cannot put our metal there. If not, our metal spoon will missing. Metal spoon, we must put it at cathode. Then the silver that we need to electroplate on it is at anode. Describe how a metal spoon can be electroplate. Include your answers how to determine the mass. So we must use the balance. On the metal spoon, you are provided with solid silver nitrate. But when we do electroplating, we must make sure it is aqueous. And then you must include a diagram in your answer. So it's just like this. Then we can start to write what are the steps. So the first step, we need to clean the metal spoon before we electroplate it. And then number two, we measure the initial mass of metal spoon. Then we must dissolve. Electrolyte must be in aqueous, cannot remain in solid. Step out the circuit. It's just like how we shows in the diagram. Must tell me metal spoon as cathode. To make sure the electroplating is even, so we rotate the metal spoon. Then we remove the metal spoon, wash and dry. And then since we need to know how many mass of silver plate on it, we we measure the final mass of metal spoon and then so the final mass minus initial mass will be the mass of silver electroplated on the spoon. All this information then you get full mark. So this is the end of paper 6 for FM 2024 and all the best for your exam. If you have any question, please feel free to comment here and please help me to subscribe, like and share the video to the friends that might need this video. Thank you and see you in the next class. Bye-bye.